If you want to do something small but significant, something that is going to make a big difference in your life, something that is going to make it better but that you can do today, I've got nine for you. Let's go! Hi guys, it's Laura from Head to Get Your Shit Together and I help busy women get organized, get motivated and get big results with little effort. As I am recording this, there are two weeks left in the year, but these things can be done at any time. Anytime you feel that you need like a little bit of a quick boost, a bit of a sense of achievement, anytime your life needs a bit of a pick-me-up. Number eight is probably my favorite. December is the time when we are actively reflecting on our lives and if your year hasn't been so great, then this is a good chance to wipe the slate clean and make a great fresh start. If you've had a good year, these will be the sprinkles on your Sunday. One, buy the thing. The thing that you want, but you're worried that it's just a little bit silly or childish or whatever. Buy it, stop worrying about what everyone else thinks. My house is full of unicorns and rainbows, but you know, I still have friends. I still work hard and earn money. I still parent my child. I still keep the house reasonably tidy and you know, wear clean underwear. I still do all the grown up things. Or most of them, I still don't really cook at all. Maybe it's something that you want to do. You know, go dance in the rain and jump in a puddle. Make a sand castle or ride a roller coaster. Build a blanket fort and eat ice cream in it. Siri, cancel all my plans for today. Pick one thing that makes your heart say, yay, and do it. Two, get rid of the thing. No, not that thing, <laughs> something else. You know what I'm talking about. The thing that's in your home that you always say you're going to get rid of, but you never do, so it sits there collecting dust and just making you feel like crap every time you clap eyes on it. Ship it out, along with the shame, and move on with your good self. Same goes for things that are taking up a valuable headspace. Or that squeaky door hinge. Just WD-40 at once and for all. <laughs> you have got one glorious life, so if something makes you feel bad, banish it. Bury it, donate it, gift it, fix it, smother it in positivity. Shoot it out of a cannon. Whatever you need to do to say your goodbyes. Three, cancel unused subscriptions. I know you think you're going to read all of those magazines, but you're really not. And that's okay, you're a busy person. You've got lots of other things to be doing, lots of other priorities. Those cookies won't bake themselves, such is life. Let go of the things that you think you should be enjoying and make more room for the things that you actually are enjoying. Or even if you do enjoy them, just realize that there are other things that you enjoy more. I mean, I like chocolate, but I don't like it as much as not having diabetes. You'll save yourself a few quid too. But even if it's free, it still comes at a cost. Email, newsletters, catalogs. Even people in your life can have too many issues. Unsubscribe. Not from this channel though. Four. Tidy your junk drawer. We all have one, that black hole where miscellaneous items go to die. Pens, tape, candles, elastic bands, keys to you don't remember what, old receipts, bits of gadgets you are pretty sure you no longer own but you can't get rid of them just in case. Things that you're not really sure what they are but they might be important. Chargers for phones you haven't owned since you were 16. Takeaway menus for that place that was closed down by the health inspector 10 years ago. <laughs> Test all the pens and get rid of the ones that don't work. Throw away anything if you don't know what it's used for or what it goes with, etc. <laughs> for everything that is left, separate and categorize it and then get yourself some nice tubs or boxes or trays or dividers or whatever and put them all in there nice and neatly just to create some semblance of order. And before you know it, the cutlery drawer will be looking a little jealous. So you'll go and spruce that one up too and then BAM! You're Martha Stewart or Marie Kondo. Five! Get a new notebook. Notebooks are like galaxies. Endless possibilities. So much stuff 
can go in them. You can plan and live an entirely different life in here. You can use them for memory keeping, for morning pages, doodling, journaling, writing lists, planning, brainstorming, script writing, novel writing, plotting world domination. Just me? Whatever you do, whatever type of work you have, whatever type of hobbies you have, whatever type of life you lead or want to lead, you can save it or strategize for it all in here. Now, I am no stranger to notebooks. <coughs> Understatement. <coughs> But this one landed in my P.O. box recently and it is a new one on me. It is from a company called Paper Castle and they sent me a message recently and were like, we'll send you a green one. This crowd did their homework. I have to show you. I'm sorry, but it's just so unusual. This one is called the Macaw. I think they're all named after parrots or exotic birds or whatever. Um, they do have different ones, but they are all equally as unusual. All handcrafted and environmentally friendly paper. Always a bonus. The cover is textured. I mean, you could start an ASMR channel with this cover. And the ridges make it kind of soft and squishy. It has got this strange corner elastic closure thing that I have never seen before, but it works. Pocket in the back with a little envelope flap so nothing falls out, plus a little slit for a business card or receipt or whatever. 256 pages, 80 GSM. Imagine the thoughts and dreams and memories and ideas this thing could hold. And some of the pages at the back are perforated into quarters so you can tear off a tiny little list. That's just plain handy and adorable. Now, the pages are blank and I normally hate a blank page. I am far too much of a perfectionist for that kind of thing. So I thought that this would be a deal breaker, but they actually have these handy guides. I place them behind the page I'm working on and now not only is everything perfectly straight and aligned, but once this is gone, it looks like I'm just that great. No wonky writing, no lines or dots to distract me. Just pure perfection. And I now want all my notebooks to be like this. I will link to it below. They are a great price. If you like notebooks, especially, you know, unusual or brightly colored ones, this should be on your list. But yes, all that space, all those possibilities, so many adventures that could be captured in here or the seedlings of so many great ideas. Now, while we're on the subject of paper and stationery, six, write a letter. Go old school and start scribbling. It could be a thank you note or a postcard or a love letter or just to catch up with a friend, but put pen to paper, stick a stamp on it and brighten someone's day. Seven, do something nice for someone else. Apart from sending snail mail, there are so many things that you can do for other people that will make a real difference in their lives. Pay for someone else's coffee, send a bunch of flowers or a care package, let someone cut in front of you, send some toys to the local children's hospital. Make it your mission to make someone else smile. Even if you're not there to see it, it will still have such a big impact on your life. Eight, talk to your parents and grandparents. Ask them about their childhoods, you know, where they grew up, who their best friend was, what their favorite game was, what they bought when they were given a shiny shilling. So much of our lives are shaped by our childhood. My parents raised me to be fiercely independent and really self-confident. They taught me the value of hard work, of getting stuck in, of using your hands to create something, you know, the value of creating something and earning something for yourself. Didn't always appreciate it at the time, of course. Sorry, ma, sorry, da. I have learned a lot about my parents, not just from the way that I am, the person that I am, the traits that I have, but from listening to their stories, the things that they tell me about their childhoods. I understand them so much better. I know what makes them tick and why. And I have lost all my grandparents now. If you still have yours, talk to them. Listen to their favorite music with them. Watch their favorite films with them. One of my favorite memories from my childhood is sitting down on a Sunday afternoon and watching an old black and white movie with my gran. 
she was <laughs> getting all emotional there she was the last one to go and even though I'm not sure if she could hear me at the time, she was in a coma, I am so grateful that I got to tell her how much those times meant to me. So yeah, listen to the memories of the people that matter most to you, and then go make some new memories with them. Nine, ditch one disposable. I have nightmares about climate change and the apocalypse. So please do this one thing and put my mind at ease and help me sleep at night again. Replace one item in your home with the reusable version, whether it be canvas bags instead of plastic shopping bags, cloths instead of paper towels, glass bottles and tubs instead of plastic. My husband recently remarked that one person isn't going to make that big a difference. And yes, he's right, one person alone won't. But my parents taught me about recycling and now Sam does it. I mean, he does it grudgingly, but I have taught him how to recycle. And I'm raising Scout, you know, in the same way. I'm teaching her how to recycle and look after things and reuse things. Just generally to be more environmentally aware. And maybe one person watching this video will be inspired to stop using plastic bags or plastic bottles or whatever. And then maybe one of their friends will think, hmm, that's interesting. I'm going to try that too. One person alone can't make a big difference the same way one candle alone is not going to light this huge dark cave. But one candle can light another candle, which can light another candle. And before you know it, the world is a brighter place. Be a candle, but like an eco-friendly one. <laughs> if you are looking for more small things to do that will make a big difference in your life, then check out this video where I have a nine more for you. Go watch that and be an all-round happier person. Until then, Gareb Mila Mahagwev. I'll see you next time.